Welcome to Let's Get It Podcast. We have a very special guest on, Malaysian represent MMA fighter, Len Xiao. But guess what? I don't give a shit if he's a fighter or nothing. He's a little midget. Oh. 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 Yeah, that's what I Yeah, that's what I Yeah, what I said. What's up, guys? We've got... What's up? Yeah, he's PK, I'm Ben. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got Lance! <laughs> Some old. Yeah, what's up? Got new what's look. going on? Ask me how long it took to grow this shit. Last time I saw you shave was probably a month ago, so this probably maybe took a month to grow. About two sleeps. That's about it. Dude, is this still a test shot? No, it's not. Oh shit. He's talking shit. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's all good. Okay, so just a little background of how do we all know each other. Same high school. Pretty sure I didn't say a single word to him in high school. Okay, let, let's be real. If you can remember, did we even talk? I don't think so, man. I, I think, think I, I, and I think the last time we saw each other was in our high school prom, and uh, that's it, already, oh, right? Oh, high school prom. Right. Yo, do you still remember stuff about high school prom? Uh? Like the part where the guys have yeah. to wear pampers. I do. Yes. Oh, oh, yes. What was it? Uh? They yes. wear pampers and they had this um this Indian MC guy, a bit chubby, but he was funny, dude. Remember that guy? Right? It was a Indian MC. I, Yo, nobody <laughs> remembers shit about high school. Yeah, it's just a blur, man. Who's your prom date, guys? I think none of us had a prom date. Why are you talking for Lance? I mean, none of us in our group, right? No yeah, one had a date. Yeah, we were late bloomers, you know. Wait, do you have a date for prom? I did, actually. Ooh. <laughs> to be honest with you, I really, I've forgotten who was it, but she was from another school. Back in high school, we had those cheer competitions, Wait, bro. So you're telling me she's Fucking... a cheerleader from another school? Yeah. God damn. Oh, okay, not from our school. Yeah, that's why. You forgot her name? Back because we, I didn't even add her on any social media platform and stuff, so I don't even remember who was it, you know? I think she liked you. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, dude, I started talking to girls when I was 17, to be honest. It was so weak, dude. Such a weak attempt. When did you start talking to girls? Same time as well, but specifically after our SPM thingy. Yeah. To be honest, like, for me, I always felt that um, it was sort of like a, a disadvantage for me. Because, yeah. you know, I'm not the tallest guy on earth. And like, Can't in high see. school, dude, you can be the most good looking person on earth, but you're a fucking short, bro. Dude, high school is a jungle, man. Like Popularity contest. Yeah, popularity contest. Yeah. Exactly, popularity dude. That's, that's how it was, man. <laughs> Um, you had clicks, you had the nerds, you had the jocks, you had the... The had anime crew, oh my god. I was a fan of the cheerleaders, to be honest. Cheerleaders is like a status symbol, you know? If, yeah. If, if a fucking ugly girl, oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if a not as attractive girl. <laughs> if a not as attractive girl. Then bad dude. Fucking judgmental, bad. You nasty. Come on, man. Come on, man. 2020, fat shaming ain't a thing, dude. I mean, it was never a thing. What shall we talk about now, dude? Your mom? <laughs> 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 Which Disney princess would you bang? <laughs> Ooh, which okay, okay. Disney princess I would bang? Uh, okay lah. Take turns, take turns. Okay. Is there an ugly princess? Uh? I don't think so. Okay, right? dude, I think uh, Ryan has to take it first because I had a great childhood so I need to think properly this <laughs> one. <laughs> okay, dude. For me, um, I don't know why this princess comes to mind straight away, man. It's got to be Princess Jasmine, man. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> digging the exotic vibe, huh? <laughs> Aladdin the dirty rat. To be fucking nerdy, dude. <laughs> so it's, I feel like her facial features, oh, that's got me going, man. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, okay, how about you, man? Who's your um, pick, dude? I also have someone in mind, and I think she's a really strong person. Uh, <laughs> what I admire about <laughs> What I admire about her is um, that she, you know, she'll go the extra length just to find out the history about her family. Princess Elsa, I love you. Yeah. Uh, you see... I don't uh, mind her sister as well. Princess Elsa... She sings as well. I don't I like think. that proportion, her neck proportion to her, her head. Her dress are beautiful though. Yeah, but her neck to head proportion is a bit fucked up. <laughs> Why you dissing Princess Elsa? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, no I could say the same about Jasmine as well. I mean, she had a bad choice. Say something bad about Princess Jasmine. What's well, bad about her? She didn't want to marry Aladdin in first. Did, is that true? Yeah. <laughs> she was boss, <laughs> She was boss, bro. You guys actually watched Aladdin? Shut up, man. We had a great childhood, bro. Elsa? Elsa, Jasmine, mm -hmm. and... Oh, I actually, I'm kind of stingy. I, I, I have two choices. Oof, Give it a go. Since I, you're the guest, dude, you get um, two. Princess Jasmine as well. Oof. And um, Ariel from Little Mermaid. Damn, <laughs> my boy. <laughs> Princess <laughs> Jasmine, right? Yeah, dude. Yeah, right. Princess Jasmine. Okay, you know what? Oh. Lumpy, if you had to pick one Disney princess. Dude, I'm, I know I wasn't wrong about oh. Jasmine. Mulan, I guess. 
This guy. This guy, come well, on. We man. have come one on, interspecies and another interracial. Wait, wait, wait. Just <laughs> another guy that is homo racial. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me. <laughs> hey, you know why they call her Mulan? Because of Mulan. Um, <laughs> yeah, Mulan yeah, Chow, right? Lan oh Chow. my god. Isn't that the reason why her name is Mulan? I don't know, bro. Okay, Lumpy. Uh, do you like. Do you prefer the hair down or tied up Mulan? The one that uh, is ready to go to war or the ones who. The I one think that's. Like a guy. Uh, yeah. Or the uh, head on uh, sure. Yeah, duh. Yeah, <laughs> the fact that he had to think. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that he had to think. <laughs> he he fell like, for it. Uh, <laughs> it's a, oh. <laughs> it is a trick question, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trick question. Okay, so wait, so yours is Merm- Little Mermaid. Yeah. Honestly. You can do her in the sea and on land. Mm. Can you do her on land? land? Does she go to land? Yeah, do it. She has she, legs on land. Yeah, bro. She married like some guy. <laughs> Some guy. <laughs> Definitely a, a, a king, right? Or a prince. No, no, no. Of- it, uh, I, wait, I'm not sure what I think about it. Okay. You could bang her under the sea. Sebastian. Under the sea. Which Disney princess has the biggest rack? I think they're all the same, no? Yeah, they're, right. they're the same director, dude. Yeah. The <laughs> animals are probably the same. You know? First of all, Asian girls, everyone knows Asian girls got the smallest boots, smallest tits, but yet you see in animes that. Um, them Asian girls always got super huge tits. It's called a fan service, just like anything else. Ben had a background in... Uh, uh, almost a degree, actually. Yeah. Um, exotic. How do you say this? Cartoons. Yeah. When I was in high school. Yeah. Uh, shout out Faku.net. I know you all went premium already. And people have to pay subscription now. <laughs> but, uh, if anyone's keen to try it out, link below. What's, what's it called? Faku.net. It's a hentai website. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For real though, when I was in high school, <laughs> okay, Ben would come up to me. At one point, he was quite into it. He always tells me, Brian, he just starts Best telling me about this. Ever. Yeah, this new storyline of yeah. Faku. And I don't know how to react, man, because I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Even I don't know how to react now, man. Dude, no. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, dude. There's a lot of stories. I, I'm kind of like either Vanilla or NTR boy. Vanilla's like, you know, childhood friends, like, they, they kind of deny their feeling for each other, but, you know, <laughs> they, they, they be thinking about doing the dirty. And then, you know, one got day, you, occasion you. strikes, you know, when it rained and they went into the same shed together and they realized, oh, damn, we are both horny as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> dude, but, okay, for, <laughs> dude, but for real though, right, hentai, they've got really typical cliche storylines. Story yeah, yeah su- super, dude. And shit, they don't happen in real life. That's the reason why Ben's uh, so good with the girls. He knows how to get them romanced up. Romanced up. Yeah. Romanced. I remember Ben telling me that <laughs> after the storyline part is over, when they get, get to the fucking, he just forwards that part. And what do you watch? Uh, you like the storyline, story, dude? Like some fantasy shit. It kind of makes more sense that <laughs> when he told me that it's for the storyline. Okay. Because you rather just watch normal porn. Right? Yeah. If it's um not pictures of fucking <laughs> black and white pictures that are of, you know, they're not even coloured. Yeah. Because yeah. I actually watched porn in the back of the class before. In, in high school? Yeah, dude. I'm yeah. sure everyone, everyone did. Has I'm sure everyone did. Yeah. We download that shit at home and bring it to school and share. Dude, and do Bluetooth sharing and stuff like that, you know? Do we dude, talk um, about school sex tape? Yeah, I'm so <laughs> Okay, so if we were form two, someone in our Shut up, no. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> okay, so we were we were form two back when we were using I was using Sony Ericsson phone. Yeah, there ain't no iPhones back then. MSN, everyone was on MSN. Uh, no Facebook as well. Friendster, that was the shit. Even though I never used any of that, we have this girl that was two years our senior, and I remember, man, I remember it like it was just yesterday. We <laughs> so we heard that our buddy, um, let's just say his name is. Huh. Yeah, so our buddy, he's got the video. He's going to show it to us after school. I don't know, he probably got it from another senior in that girl's form that was in the video. Then after school, we were waiting at the bus stop and he came running out. Guys, I've got it! I've got it, guys! And everyone crowded around him and we watched it together, man. And it was magical, dude. My yeah. BP got hard. Yeah, so it was a one minute video. Um, I always remember the songs that were playing in the background, Yellow Card, Only One, and James Morrison, You Give Me Something. Mm-hmm. So that was playing in the background and okay. she was um, getting after it. She sent the video to her buddy. Not her buddy, sorry, her boyfriend. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and her boyfriend being a fucking dickhead. Uh, not yeah, cool. not cool, man. Not cool, not dude. Cool. Honestly, that, that type of shit is traumatizing to um, any girl yes. that, that would be... Or you know, any guy. I don't think so, dude. <laughs> like, let, let's be real, man. If you had um, if you're in high school and if you compare a, a guy and a girl, okay, a guy had a sex tape release, people are not going to give that much fucks as compared. It's a different level of pressure and um, what do you call it? Anxiety that you're going to face. Yeah. 
from compared to a girl being yeah. in that situation. It's yeah. just different, man. Because we found out about it in Form 2. It happened two years before we found out about it. Mm-mm. And it's just long gone now. Oh, <laughs> no, one, no one knows where it is. But <laughs> I've heard her friends like make fun of her. Um, <laughs> but they're, they're actually her close friends. Like They just tease her and she's gonna be all, she has to be all tough. You know? Like, hey, fuck you. La. But actually inside... Her ex or whatever he was at the time, that's fucked up, you know? Like, yeah, who the fuck does that? You know what I mean? You really, yeah. I, yeah, seriously. You think but, about it. Uh, um, teenagers are crazy, dude. They do crazy don't shit. Don't say that, but like, because like, you know, the Singapore, they have so many influences that yeah. leaked yeah. that shit, right? Those Singapore influencers, mm. um, I don't know how I know about that. Definitely did not search that up on xvideos.com. But oh, yeah, definitely did not key in SG uh, influencers, sucking dick. But that shit is different because that was mutual. They yeah. both wanted it released. This girl, she just, you know, she was just pleasure, yeah, yeah, yeah. pleasuring herself, sent it to her boyfriend, keep it private. Um, and he released it to his to his friends and it's fucking dick move, dude. Yeah. From two, man. She was from two. Yeah. Are we even allowed to talk about that shit? <laughs> I mean, it's your Sunday. choice. You can cut it out later. If you no, want. no, no. I'll cut, no, cut the name. No, yeah, but, but dude, it's not us, man. Dude, it's just something that happens. It's messed up, man. It's, well, it was in someone's phone. Once man. again, sponsored by Antibax. Antibax, <laughs> if you're watching this, um, fucking sponsor our episode I yeah want, like, Antibax the... oh I actually know of she knew of people there oh uh, Antibax yeah. so you want some sanitizer stay safe sure you trying to stay safe boy sure you just try not to be rude probably didn't want it at that point in time okay like just down it like. <laughs> it kind of smells like vodka dude it does yeah. it's the funny thing about sanitizers <laughs> because I work in, the, in this industry right people yeah. actually like Yo, drink pass me my water Sorry. drink sanitizers you know what yeah, yeah man. you'll be you surprised explain that shit. Pe- what? people actually drink sanitizers as like alcohol, you know, like and kampung some, people. No, dude, like, dude, not just kampung, like city people as well, dude. They they try to use it as like alcohol, and it works. They were tipsy and or drunk, bro. Yeah, okay, I know they're tipsy. I know they're drunk. Guys, I will have three drops of it now. Be careful. Do you want to? I can try. Okay, but make sure it's like three drops. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, bad aiming, dude. Oh man, are you actually? Just be careful. Have... Please be careful. Okay, so you pretended really? like you fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> a regular sanitizer. Mm. The com- what's the composition of alcohol inside? Yeah. Percentage. For some sanitizers, they actually have between twenty to twenty-five, or like can- it could go up to seventy-five as well. No way. Yeah, dude. There, there are. There wait, are. Wait, wait, wait. Can we have shots? Dude, dude I, o- I always um, assume it was. Yeah, yeah, but for my company, we we actually don't produce alcohol like um sanitizers. So I'm like. Okay, cool. Oh. For sanitizers, they put alcohol, right? It's because that, like, for example, clinics or hospitals, they have to use alcohol because they need their hands to be dried fast, you know? Okay. They, they need to. Because they have to, like, be on the clock, like, people to treat and stuff like that. They need it dry quick. But if you want to do an experiment, you can actually try, like, putting an alcohol sanitizer on a table or at least a cup or something like that. You light... You put a lighter there, you can see it flamed up, dude. Okay. By the way, this is how every guest on my podcast should be sitting. Like Lance right now. As relaxed as he gets. It's a Sunday. The mic, the mic is right at his face. <laughs> <laughs> Have you drank sanitizer? My company's one, yeah. Oh. I knew it. You try to keep, no. keep it quiet for a bit, eh? No, because like... <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> but you say you have no alcohol in your sanitizer. That's why it was better, you know? Oh. Okay. You know, that's why it's better. We have no alcohol and stuff inside. Common thought would be, mm. apart from the alcohol, there's mm. going to be other ingredients that is going to be toxic or poisonous. Oh yeah, I'm not too sure about others. But for mine, I think, because we work with a lot of like natural ingredients, yep. you know, like flower oil, tea tree oil and stuff like that. So it's like, yes. it's cool, you know? Well. It's like vegan as well. Okay. Yeah. The chemicals they use are, if it's chemicals, they are safe. But there's no chemicals, that's the best part. It's all just natural stuff only. Okay. Mm. I don't know enough about vegan, but I cannot imagine myself being a vegan dude. So one time I was working in, in Melbourne Zara. I was in the back, the, the the storeroom. So I was doing the folding clothes and whatever with my colleague next, next to me. This guy is a super, super hipster. Okay, mm. He's got a long, long beard here. And it's so fine. Like he backs into a ball and he had a big frohawk. And he was telling me about, yeah, dude, you know, I just realized that like, you know, humans were actually not meant to eat meat before people invented fire. If they ate any type of meat, they would fall sick. That's what he was saying. So he was trying to convince me but that- But then paleo diet would suggest otherwise. I didn't think about that. I was just letting him, you know, brainwash me. All right. Okay. And he was, dude, he was good at it, man. He said that, okay, 
if you were to eat like a piece of raw meat right yeah. now, you would probably fall sick if you eat too much of it. And I was thinking, oh yeah, you, you've got a point. Then he, he, he compared it to slave, slavery. He said, if back then you told someone that a black person is not meant to be a slave, they would think you're crazy. It's like telling you that a cat is actually a dog. Then I was like, wow, this guy is making sense. Wow. Tell me, tell me who's going to forgo bacon. People who Either are not allowed to. Haven't tasted really good just- bacon or... There's beef bacon though. <laughs> I like how he just chimes in there. Yeah. There's beef bacon, no? Yeah. So what do you think about the election? <laughs> <laughs> I have no input about the election. All I know is that Daddy loves sending memes about Trump losing. The Joe Biden is pedophile. I, I mean, I'm going to be really honest. I think about a month ago, Lumpy asked me, who is who's Malaysia president? <laughs> <laughs> who's our president? Mohidin. Yeah, I didn't know that, man. Yeah, yeah. Straight up. Yeah, man. Up. It's okay, man. I'm adjusting back to Malaysia. Love Malaysia. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, seriously. Yeah. I have a picture on his body. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. He's... What's your worst memory from high school? Okay, one I can pass out right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you, you go first. So, Ben can go ahead. Probably, like, you know, your boy was 13 years old, kind of falling in love for the first time. Because, uh, yeah, I was young and she was like one year older. The only reason why I think I like her was probably because she has an amazing rack. At form 2, it was developed. She did. Alright, oh, he knows what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Like, she's quite petite, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah that, that she's just racks, uh, racks on racks. Racks on racks. Okay. Uh, yeah, by the way, yeah, so like, <laughs> yo, so I was telling like one of my close friends. <laughs> so basically, I was telling <laughs> Oh, I like this girl and yo next moment he told the whole world <laughs> and they fucking know. shame me dude like when <laughs> come they fucking push me there then you know like I'm fucking young and I'm like dude, damn shy dude. right yes, and then like yo everyone is like hey Ben I know <laughs> then when she walks hey Ben 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 see <laughs> you know like all probably got the same treatment but, but like for me I was like fuck I'm never gonna like tell anyone I like a girl again Jeez. throughout the whole high school yo I was so shy like to talk to any girls because I'm just afraid that would happen again like yeah. people are just gonna like fucking Shame you, I guess. Also, reason why maybe I bloom a bit late. Yeah, that's hundred so, like, percent the reason. That, that's bad experience, dude. Okay, so what Ben said is very similar for for me, and I would say us, like our group, right? There's a reason why we didn't talk to girls until later on okay. because we were all we all had a similar experience. We yeah. were all traumatized, dude. Shit. Let's be real, man. Let's just be real right now. So when when I was in form one, form there's one not many well. pretty girls. I would say in our class, probably a handful. So one of my close friends, let's call him um, let's call him sexy, yeah, uh, because his name is sexy. So, do you know what sexy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so sexy. We were playing PS together. You know, he came over to my house and it, it was like my first, second one in school. And then he suddenly, he suddenly said out of nowhere, hey, you like this girl? And I'm like, say name And I'm like, how did, how, how did, did you know I like Okay, so okay. it was in form one. Like, yeah. In my mind, like, how? But at the whole time I denied it. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> and sure enough, the next day when I went to school, no, it was chaos, man. Jeez. It's just nonstop. You're like, hey, I heard, I heard you like I heard, I heard, I heard. Everyone's telling me what they heard from yeah. this guy who practically made it up on the spot. You know what's the worst thing? <laughs> you know how bad it was? Even that girl came to me and said, hey, I heard you like me. <laughs> Dude, and to her, I'm like, no. But in my mind, I'm like, oh man, this yeah. is too much bullying right here. Yeah. yeah. But it's funny though, like, because I think when I first went to before that time, you all in the same gang or something, right? After all that, of us, yeah. Yeah, all of y'all. No, no, I, do, I was never close to that. Really? Never. Oh, I mean, I just thought y'all were just practically to. I like, only talked to her after high school, dude. Really? Dude, I was traumatized. Like, hey, but dude, what I think is that he still likes her now until today. Cut my losses. So. <laughs> yeah. Like when I say that we didn't talk to girls, right? Yeah. We literally didn't oh, talk shit. to girls. Okay, we were busy having, we were in our own world having fun. Yep. But if you're talking about worst memory, I don't think that's my worst memory, mm. but it's very similar to. Mm. I don't have a worst memory, but I have something traumatizing. There was. Like one or two times, I confessed to a girl. I don't know what was wrong with me back then. Like which no girl, filter, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In our school or your? Our school, not my school. Everything I tried, but then they all use this term to two terms to me. It's either you're LOA, you're too short. These two are like fuck. Where that's where my insecurity just grew. You know? Where do you confess to the girl? At like our bus station. Sometimes at their school as well. I tried everything, bro. If it was true text, I would. Say I never said I like you, you know. I love you straight away, you know. Like, that's how mess. That's how scary. No, I, I always, I always had it down to a to the proper system, you know. You gotta like first and love. Dude, comes, that's the thing. You know, after you're in a relationship. I, like, so, so the girl rejected you. Literally said that you are someone who is lack of attention and you are too short. Yeah, pretty much. 
Oh, bitch that. slut whore. <laughs> oh. So like that's where like my insecurities sort of grew, you know, and stuff yeah, no like shit, that. Dude. Yeah, dude. Throughout the years, I got over it. I start to like. I'm not trying to be. You got a prom date? I mean, that's good. Yeah, enough. we didn't have no prom dates, man. Come on, man. That one I didn't know, but thank God she wasn't from our school, lah. You know, because if and you don't like, even remember her name. Okay, maybe it's a guy. Who knows? Whoa. No, man. No, no, no. no. Man. Yeah. I feel like in high school we are, our self-esteem is like the most vulnerable right and anything can kind of like just shatter it yeah. at the same time mm. you're so, so many people join gang because of that because they need somewhere to belong yeah so we had this guy in Form 1, Form 2 you know and then um, he wasn't in anyone's gang or clique and um, out of nowhere you know within the next week suddenly he joined the, the local school gang okay so out, out of nowhere right, he just suddenly fit in with all the cool kids yeah. you know and um, because he joined the local school gang mm. and he found his place dude his home and he was from then on part of their gang mm. yeah because he had somewhere to he has common interests let's put it that way yeah a lot, okay. of, a lot of people do that man like it's normal man when you're a kid somewhere to belong like, when you, right? yeah feel secure. And, and dude like I can I can guarantee you right it, it happened so subconsciously yeah. that he didn't think of anything he just thought of um fun yeah that's why he thought about fun and yeah. it's true man he, I'm pretty sure he had more fun yeah after that yeah <laughs> for sure High school was always a great time, man. For for us, like we really had so much fun during high school. Imagine like waking up every day, right? Then like you on the way to your school. Then when you reach school, right? All the boys are at the bench, yeah. and they're like, "Whoa!" And you're like, "Damn, boy, let's get the day started." Yeah, and, and that's the best part. The, the, the worst part about school was waking up. Apart from waking up, when you're actually in school, I mean, everyone dreaded it, but we just having fun while dreading it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sanitizer break. What's the <laughs> uh, stay safe, boys. Um, what, what do you call this? Uh, um, what? It's a <laughs> it's a message brought to you by uh, Let's Get It Podcast. Everybody, stay safe. This episode is brought to you by Antibax. Antibax. <laughs> um, by yeah. the way, Lance is um, a frontliner. Yeah. Uh, from, uh, <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm actually working in a sanitizing company. Sanitizing actually. company. Oh, yeah. oh, that's the word. <laughs> like, in, like B2B kind of industrial shit. B2B, B2C. Yeah, we, we both, we do everything actually. Like it's called um, Bacta Clean. Yup, Bacta yeah. Clean. Yeah, so. Rapid, bro. Below. <laughs> <laughs> do they have an Instagram page? Yeah, yeah, we do. We Link do. below. Link below. Link below. <laughs> yeah, so I work there. Um, I'm doing just like UBD as well, and yeah. uh, mar- I'm a little bit of marketing for the company as yeah. well. Yeah. So, yeah. Of right. course, man. So you like go to people's place and kind of like Is sanitize it? the whole office area, kind of office thing. houses. Do you yeah. think a person can get drunk off sanitizer? Um, no. I mean, wait. Depends like which kind of sanitizer you use. The strongest. Strongest? Well, I'm not too sure. <laughs> um, because right, for, <laughs> for, 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 for one thousand <laughs> subscribers, and we'll not do it. Benjamin here has been saying this every uh, other episode or so. Oh yeah. Mm. Ooh. We're still waiting on that, man. Like, why is everyone taking so long? To- Tell the people what you're gonna do once we we hit that hundred subscriber mark. I've been mark. saying for months, hundred subscriber and I fucking tattoo my head. I still don't see y'all doing that. Yeah, dude, it looks like no one Why? wants to see a tattoo on his head. <laughs> Why? I'm, I'm, I'm about to lose my career. I'm about to stick all this shit 100% just for the podcast. But Chips are down, dude. I don't see anyone doing shit. So, yeah, ain't nobody subscribing hit that yet. subscribe right now if you want to see a tattoo on my head. Over there. Live stream. If we actually leave it up to the uh, audience to de- decide what the tattoo in your head, most likely a dick. Then that's very soon, man. Yeah. 100 subscribers ain't your thing, dude. Yeah, dude, but we, 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 we thought, too, we, so. I thought like when we, we said that 100 subscribers shit, right, it's going to be like one month straight that, it happened. <laughs> so my soul to the devil. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's alright, it's Gucci. Dude, but okay, wait, you're going to get it here, right? I think most likely here. Do you like go to an Indian barber? Yeah. I've been going to Indian barbers pretty much until Lumpy recommended this. So during COVID, um, they're not allowed to be open. So mm. I, yeah, so I go to uh, a friend of ours, okay, uh, someone's house and He's a he's a hairstylist. Yeah, apart from that, I've always gone to Indian barber. Dude. Yeah, I can say that the, there is a difference, but I'm not picky on my um, look at my hair. Dude. It's as basic as it gets. So mm-hmm. any anything will do, man. Yeah. So Indian barbers always work fine for me, dude. So it's twelve bucks, man. Like for me, it's twelve bucks. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much you guys get it cut for. Um, I get between eight to ten bucks. Bra. Yeah. It's damn cheap. Yeah, yeah, but it's generally what ten to fifteen max, Mm-mm-mm. right? Do they massage your head? Yeah. They do. Oh, oh, okay. The I never do the do massage it. thing, man. Like sometimes it depends on your barber, right? They'll actually crack your neck as well. Like, whoa, you know, that, that 
That thing is nice, huh? Try that. It's ah. try, bro. It's really, really nice. Think give us a crack, man. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Huh? What? How can... What the? <laughs> Wait. Can you can you do something? No. I... Oh shit! Let's have a crack off right now, dude. This is the most basic. Right? Everyone can do this. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> There's this common um common thought that people think that if you're skinnier and like more bony mm -hmm. looking, you can crack more. I don't know, man. No idea, man. Bro, science, dude. Bro, science. Yeah. Me busted. First time I talked to Lance, I, I hit you up on Facebook. Yeah. Okay. But I remember I commented on one of your fights. Mm -hmm. I just started getting into um, MMA. I was like, I started being a fan of UFC. Um, I'm gonna be honest, it's the Conor McGregor era. Ever since then, I'm a big fan, still am a big fan. And yeah, now we're here, dude. <laughs> that was two years ago, probably. Two or three. Yeah, around there, right? Yeah. Okay, how many fights have you had? So far, I have uh, six MMA fights. How many wins, how many losses? Uh, I have five wins. Not that I care. <laughs> one <laughs> loss. First of all, that ain't easy to do. One time, one championship fighter, Aguilan Tani, was teaching the classes in Monarchy MMA. So I asked him, hey dude, um, is there any way I could like try competing in MMA one day and stuff? Like, just, and we just talked. He said, hey, Lance, tell you what, why don't you just come for our MMA pro practice classes there, you know? And then he invited me for fighters class. And dude, I was actually starstruck, you know? Because I saw some fighters from one championship, some UFC veterans and stuff like, whoa, you know? Yeah, Aguilan Tani, mm -hmm. he is probably the most famous, the most notable Malaysian fighter right now, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so his training camp, he's going to have lots of lots of really high level fighters. Yeah. Especially like, <clears throat> if you're talking about in Malaysia, they're probably the cream of the crop. Let's just backtrack a bit. We'll start off with, how did you actually get into MMA? One of my friends, uh, his name is Shabil. Basically, how it all happened was, I asked him, hey dude, what you doing? tomorrow night or something mm, like that and mm. then he told me I got an MMA class to go then I'm like okay. oh cool you know the next two days or three days as I saw him again I saw him with a black eye I'm like oh wow okay. that's yeah. what it does to you right that's how he planted the seed in me so okay, okay cool so, so when you <laughs> say that kind of seed man yeah. <laughs> yeah bro so when you okay when you say he planted a seed in me mm. does it <laughs> He kind of let you know like, hey man, this is what I should stay away from. I don't get no black eyes. Mm, no, actually, no. He, because he told me it's a really good so sort of therapy kind of thing for him. So I'm like, okay, cool. But as like time passes by, I start to realize a lot of things, you know, because in high school or like early days of college, I was actually bullied, overlooked, taken advantage of, cyber bullied, everything, you know. Cyber bullied? Yeah, dude. That like, was a typical yeah. nice guy story. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. It's just, I think... It was just me, you know? Dude, um, I never spoke with Lance mm -hmm. in high school, but when I saw Lance around, he's always super talkative. Mm. And happy. Super yeah. happy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? So yeah, I can't yeah, imagine, yeah. you know, it doesn't don't matter if you're small or, yeah. you know, skinny, scrawny. I didn't think that someone would bully you if you have a... How, charismatic. How yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Charis charisma, you know? charismatic. Yeah, last time I would say I'm like that is because um, I didn't know who I was, you know? So I always thought, be happy, try to be positive all the time. It's the easiest way to go. But actually inside, I have a lot of insecurities inside of me, you know? I just don't know how to, um, don't know how to channel it. So I just yep. use this like happy-go-lucky attitude to mask it out, you know? It was um, it was something that you you actually could consciously feel inside yeah. the insecurity part. Yeah, dude. You mask it well, dude. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Early 2014, that time, it was an ex-girlfriend situation. We broke up and like, I don't know how to channel all these insecurities and anger anymore, you know? So I just remember what my friend Shabdo told me about MMA and stuff. So that's where I decided to give it a shot, mm -hmm. you know? Tried giving that a shot. It was fun. And then um, not too long after, I went to Melbourne to further my studies. Took up uh, Brazilian yep. Jiu-Jitsu. Yep. Mm. Yeah. And Which then, gym do you go to? Oh, in Melbourne, I went to Renegade MMA. Okay. They have striking classes as well. The whole package. MMA. The whole package. So basically. they have a team with mm. fighters as well. Mm -hmm. Came back to Malaysia and then uh, found Monarchy MMA. Bringing back to the topic I was saying earlier about the fighters program, right? Yeah. I was training there like every day, I would say. Sparred with people from, let's just say, G's none of them were like even close to your size. And yeah, weight. I'm actually the s smallest <laughs> and lightest guy from my gym right now. I weigh around 48 to 52 kgs that... Dude, just from yeah. a really mm. general and casual person's perspective, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, if I was your size, mm -hmm. the thought of going or, like, you know, getting to MMA is not that appealing because you know that, first of all, most of the people over there mm. are already bigger than you yep. and it's a full contact sport, man. Like, it's... Um, you don't get... Eh, you don't get more physical than, than MMA, you yep. know, mixed martial arts. For example, when I did my first sparring, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone is scared at first. Yep. And then you realize that after you try it out, you realize that 
you're with someone you can trust because he's your friend. Mm-hmm. And what sparring is, is people are trying to get better. Yep. And they ain't no hurting each other. Mm-hmm. I just didn't know what to expect, you know, because I never experienced like a full-on fighter's course. Um, we did a lot of like intense workout, intense drills. Like for example, Mondays we have like striking, like kickboxing, mm-hmm. a little bit of Muay Thai. Got Tuesdays you. we have wrestling. Um, Wednesdays we have um, MMA ground and pounds. Thursdays is full on MMA sparring. Fridays is full on uh, jujitsu. So yeah. intense as fuck. <laughs> yeah, that's actually really oh, intense. Day- at least five rounds of sparring, so that's twenty five minutes. Wait, do you say every day? Yeah, every day there's every at least, day there's, there's, at a, least- there's a sparring session. Yeah, actually Tuesdays to Fridays we spar with MMA gloves. Mondays are the only days we spar with boxing gloves at that time. Why though? Why do you guys spar with boxing gloves? Mondays, like, like- as I mentioned earlier, we focus more on striking. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, you guys spar every day. Mm-hmm. Um, you, uh, how if you had to put it in a percentage, how hard are you guys going? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I tried to go hundred, but everyone's bigger than me, oh. <laughs> so I don't even know. For them, they could be like from twenty to forty to sixty. You all yourself, the way to 80. you're probably the only one that goes hundred. Um, I would say between um eighty percent at most to one hundred. There's one more girl. Her name is Colleen. So she's yeah. a Malaysian MMA fighter as well. What's her version. surname again? Sorry. Colleen Augustine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I heard of. I heard of her. Yeah. yeah. So um, she's actually heavier than me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's actually heavy and yeah. like, oh my god. How much heavier? I at that time I think at least four or five kgs heavier. Okay. Now I'm not too sure because we actually haven't been training, um, together. training together very often. It's yeah. because of this whole uh, 2020 pandemic situation, you know? Fuck yeah, shit. So, so every time when we spar, I get really nervous and get really scared, you know? Because like, what if I go all out uh-huh. and then <laughs> they go all out on me back? I know I'm dead, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's a very honest opinion. Yeah. Like, and you're being very real, man, because that is the reality of it. Let's be real, man. When you're sparring, it's very hard to mm-hmm. control how hard you go, first of all. Yeah. For example, the moment you go from 50, you jump to 70, mm-hmm. your opponent's going to reply back at 70 as well. Yep. If you go faster, the other guy has to go faster to yep. actually land on you, right? Yep. Yeah. So, so it's, it's not easy, man, to control. I was landed clean so many times. I, do, I didn't even know was that like 100 or like 50, but it just for me, it felt, everything felt like 100, you know? Yeah. So from there, I think it sort of taught me a lot, you know, like how to like take shots, take punches, take kicks, and not to mention I have great coaches as well. So they taught for me sure. and conditioned me how to like get better at it, yeah. um, be tough about it, you know? I would say if someone were to hit me now, I'll definitely feel it, but you I know how to, to take it. it. I'm used to yeah. it already, you know? Pardon? How was your first fight? My first fight. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about your first fight. Like from the moment you realized that, mm-hmm. okay, there's an upcoming fight that I'm going to take mm-hmm. part in, how long did you have? Um, I actually had three months plus to prepare for it. It's a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's gonna drain your mental side, man. Here's the thing, you know, like when though, that three months, right, it actually like felt like, okay, cool, I'm just gonna train every day and stuff like that. But if let's say tomorrow I were to compete again or next week I would compete again, I still get nervous until today. Every fighter is gonna be nervous. Yep. Um not not only a fighter, you know, it's very normal for anyone to be nervous when they're doing a competition. Mm. But for you, do you feel like being nervous? It's more positive or negative? It's a little bit of both, but I'm lucky enough to have my team by my side, you know, they would calm me down before my fights, you know. How would they calm you down, man? Sometimes uh, they'll talk some sense into me, literally slap me. Oh, okay, okay. How's that going to calm you down, dude, slapping you? No, it's like slapping me like that nonstop, you know? Yeah, how's that going to calm you down? It did, I don't know how, but it did. It did, I don't know how, but it did, you know? You kind of put yourself, I I mean, do you kind of put yourself in the mindset like, well, it is what it is. Can't yeah. do, I'm, I'm here right now. You yeah. know? Maybe like trying to snap you out of your, yeah. your own thoughts. Yeah, it was. Like, I fucking w- focus on now. I wouldn't say it's thoughts, but it's more towards uh, anxieties. Dude, uh, you know? so for example, <laughs> Lance mentioned to me, I think your last fight, is it? Yeah. Okay. So s- someone he fought was about 5'9", five, 5'10", five, just slightly shorter than me and probably a bit skinnier than me. You mm-hmm. know how, how much bigger the size difference is? You and fucking wreck him. <laughs> no matter how big or how small, I always get nervous, you know, because like if your like mental strength or something it's yeah. not strong enough, yeah, yeah, yeah. everything will go down the drain, you know, your game plan, oh, your oh, training song. will, I, go, I know will what go, you all need. go down. You need a sick walkout theme song. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what's, yeah. Your theme what's, song? Your, what's your walkout song, bro? <laughs> My most recent walkout song was um, Hit Me With Your Best Shot by Pat, Pat ben- Benatar. Benatar. <laughs> <laughs> that was really Classic funny, though. Yeah. Know? Yeah, it was really, really hey, Whatever funny. gets you happy, man. Yeah, but here's the thing. I didn't even realize the song was playing. That's how nervous I was, you know? <laughs> yeah. You didn't realize the song was playing. Yeah. But because you know the cameras was on you, were you like, 
you know, like no. trying to dance and shit. <laughs> no, you know, no, no, not really. Okay. Like, like the organizers had to come all the way back to like, Lance, you're up, you're up. I'm like, so I was like, what? I don't have experience myself, but mm. I can imagine dude, because I've listened to a lot of fighters talk about it, dude. That shit drains you like a motherfucker. Mm. Like the moment you reach the venue where you're gonna wait for your fight mm-hmm. and watch all the other fights, mm-hmm. your heart is already sinking. Yep, it I doesn't s- stop until the fight is over. Yep, pretty much. Or when the fight starts. Yep. As soon as I arrive at the venue, I'm like, oh man, brrr, non-stop, you know. Shit. Does it disappear with fights, uh, with more fights? Um, like desensitization? Never. On- Honestly, it's very hard to say because everyone works in a different way. Usually when the bell rings, I'm still a bit shaky, you know, all the time. But someone would just to hit me, then that's it. I, I'll just snap out of it already, you know. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But Some people are like that. I yeah. guess it's a, a natural response where you're like, okay, I need to stop getting hit. Yeah, maybe I'm not that experienced yet, you know. Mm. Always getting better, bro. I'll uh, give you one example. was last year as I fought for a world championship in um, Singapore. They were partnered with one championship. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, so it's you. called uh, GAMA, so Global yep. Association of Mixed Martial Arts. Okay, Gama. for for people who are not well-versed into MMA, so like there's a lot of different organizations. Typically, when they have a world championship, it means that they accept fighters from all, all around, around the yeah. world. That's right. So um, I guess it just depends on mm. um, how big the promotion is. Correct. Yeah. So that was actually the biggest anxiety problem I had at that time, you know? Yeah. You fought for a world championship, but how many fights did you have to take part in before you got into the finals? I actually made it to the semi-finals actually. So okay. I, that's why I brought back a bronze. So I'm actually happy oh, okay. enough, okay. you know? Nice. And that explains my one loss so okay. earlier, yeah. as I so, mentioned. So how many fights did you have in Gamma? In Gamma, I had two. Two fights, okay. Mm. Like it's like a knockout system. It's like a tournament system, correct. For the finals, semi-finals, yeah. finals. Yeah. Oh. The first person I had to defeat was a guy from Russia. So, okay, cool, you know? Oh. I'm just happy I won that. Then the next round, I had to fight a guy from. Yo, yo, tell, tell us more about how yeah. you, how you hmm? beat that guy up. Yeah, hmm? yeah, like come on, man. How bloody was <laughs> his face? Oh, yeah, dude, that's uh, what we want to hear. How dude. many joints was dislocated? Can <laughs> yeah. you walk after that? Did, Could did his mom recognize him? You know, like, <laughs> did he then look you in the eye after that? And we, we say, say bitch. We say, we say, we... Um, here's the thing. I can't. <laughs> 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 oh, I thought we were about that. Yeah, I thought we were about that. Oh. Um, okay, for the Russian guy, um, I faced at first, um, and the, as soon as the bell rings, so the referee says touch gloves, right? So as I reached my hand out to touch glove, he just rushed over and like took me down nonstop. Oh, he, so he's a pussy, bro. Did, did he touch a glove? No, he didn't. He just ran and like, okay. boom, you know? Bitch, <laughs> disrespect. But no, it's okay, you know? Like, um, I would say he dominated me on the first round. He really dominated me. He mm. tried to choke me out. He ground and pounded me a lot of times. Okay, he had top position. He had my back. Everything he he was controlling the whole but, fight on the first round. So your fight style, majority of it is would be grappling based. Um, a little bit of grappling, some basic striking, you know. But yep. I'm not gonna lie, like I'm not the best at it, you know. But that's the thing. You're always gonna get humbled. Yeah, you're always you gonna will, get beat up. You know? So that's so why you have this mentality that okay, you're the best today but there's gonna be people better than you tomorrow or the next day or the next minute you it can be a, a guy that joined the gym and you're like hey man how, how come i've never seen you around exactly. and he's like kicking your ass and yeah like, what the fuck? so that's why yeah. okay back to the question mm. the bell rung mm. he was dominating you for the most part of the first round yeah what was going through your mind at that time um i had a different set of coaches because my coaches from monarchy mma couldn't make they couldn't it they couldn't make it so uh, sucks yeah, but thank God I have like friends from all around the world that are in this scene as well. There's mm. one guy, his name is Mike. He coaches in Bali MMA in Indonesia. Okay. I had another one championship fighter. His name is F Ting. He also represents Malaysia to fight. And uh, I had F Ting's coach as well. His yeah. name is Amish. He, he's actually the owner of Auckland MMA. So it's cool, you know, I had like Bali MMA. I had Auckland MMA yeah, by yeah, my yeah. side, you know. I was like looking at them like know what to do i don't know what to do you know yeah, yeah. and then as a as soon as like the end of first round yep. the bell rang i was like water water water, <laughs> water. true or false yeah you are the most tired you've ever been i'm always tired man but you know you can you can prepare for three minutes five minutes mm. in the gym yeah you can put a, an actual timer on yep. you know have people every all eyes on you but mm. it's different when you're actually okay first of all you had to go go through the um the nerve wracking part, you know, where you're going to wait for a couple of hours, that's going to drain you. Mm. So did you feel like, damn, my gas tank is so shit compared to oh. how, how it was in training? Sometimes, yeah, sometimes no, depending. Okay. But it's funny because it brought me to round two of that fight, right? So when round two happened, I don't know what happened, even though my opponent was like, she's still dominating everything, but I was still full of energy, you know? <laughs> I could still jump around, still could play around and stuff like that. 
You're getting more comfortable. Yeah, I don't know why. Did he hurt you at any point? Um, no. He sort of took me down a little bit, but I know how to counter it back. And nice. um, yeah. So thank God for. Copper. <laughs> 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 okay, what's up, what's up? Thank God for jujitsu, you know. Yeah. So yep, yep. yeah. So and then um, grappled with him a bit, threw some strikes, some knees as well. Yeah, you got back up to your feet. Yeah, got back up to my feet, and then fast forward. I don't know how that happened because it all happened so fast, right? But I all I know is I had his back, I controlled his back, and I synced in a submission. So that was like, oh damn. You, so you had his back. Was it while you guys were on the ground, or hmm? it was a? St- Standing back to it was on the ground already actually. Okay. So he tap out. No, here's the thing. I he actually fell asleep. Oh <laughs> you put him asleep, little lullaby. I, I, he was very good, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Cause I would say uh, maybe mm. he thought he could have finished me in the first round because like I said, he dominated me in the whole first round, you know. Yeah. You're but probably at, right, dude. As round two started, he still had a really good gas tank as well. But even though uh, my hand was raised in the end, I was like, I'm still nervous, you know, like <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like even though the fight's over. Yeah, I was Even still... Even though the ringles were next to you. There were no ringles for that. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Was it a two-round or three-round fight? Three okay. rounds. Just like a pro MMA and mm. stuff like that. The okay. only thing that has five rounds are championship rounds. Or like main event slots, you know? Yeah. So for amateur MMA, it's three minutes. Three oh, three mi- minutes? Yeah. Three minutes of three rounds or three minutes of five rounds, depending on what are you mm. fighting, mm. you know? Okay. So you choked him out, mm. put him to sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, he woke up what five seconds later. Or it took him a while to get up, but I I spoke to his uh, teammates oh. as well from Russia. I told them you guys train like a good fighter here and mm. stuff like that. Show you respect, know? man. He's a really good wrestler. He had better like ground game than I did on the first round, but mm. I don't know what happened on the second round to him. You know. Yep, yep. So like I'm not trying to be cocky or anything, but you're hmm? the opposite of being cocky, man. <laughs> so don't just chill on that part. Oh, okay. Man. Before the whole fight happened, right? One of the interviewers from one championship they interviewed me. You know, they said, "Hey, how do you think you do? How do you think you win and stuff like that, right?" Mm. And when they asked me, I'm like. What do you mean win? I'm just scared about my life. I just get out alive. That's how I answered them. Oh, yeah, that's how scared I was. You know, you know how like big everyone was. You it, can't filter anything with, at yeah, the point. Yeah, I really can't because right during the fight, I was actually underweight. The limit was forty eight to fifty two, right? Yeah, I was at forty seven. Okay. <laughs> if you had to guess, mm. how many kgs was he on the fight? Day? I think um fifty seven, fifty six. No, I yeah. think he was probably just on weight as well. Oh, it's not one day before. The weigh-ins. No, they, they did weigh-ins on the day itself. Oh, okay. Hmm. So, you know, like in UFC where they have 24 hours to rehydrate their body. So their w- actual weight on the fight night compared hmm. to when they weigh in is really different. Because yeah. people are going to try and get as big of an advantage as they can. It's funny though, because <laughs> the organizers did ask, like saying, hey, are you really good to fight? Are you, are you sure you want to fight and stuff? You must have looked really... Like you were shitting your pants off. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, my only response was, yeah, I'm go. Like in your mind, you're thinking like, I need to get the fuck out of here, dude. Or just get the job done. Honestly, at the time, my mind was blank. I was just hungry at that time. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was just like, hungry. I know. Just a curious question. Yeah, sure. At which point in your career, you think you, you will have a gorilla tattoo on your chest? Oh, I tried getting a tattoo are... on my chest before. Do you have a tattoo, by the way? No, I don't. That's how ticklish I am. Like I tried <laughs> I tried, yeah. you know, like the tattoo artist was like just put a needle on my on my chest and I just laugh like hee 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 you know, oh so, and, and then the tattoo artist is like nope here you kiss your deposit back no oh serious <laughs> yeah I'm that ticklish you know you know when my friend because my friend is in mm. uh, South Melbourne mm. shout out Ravi Andra Savani so I do the fight pod with Ravi mm. he is from Ten Planet mm. so when he does any jujitsu shit to me mm. I mean I'm not a homophobe dude but I feel I just feel like it's it's kind of ticklish. Yeah. You know, like you say, like, I, I'm not used to it, man. I feel, <laughs> did you ever feel that way when you were starting out doing grappling? Come on, let, let's be real, man. Um, mm, there's going to be guys, the there's going to be girls here's, on the mat. Here's the thing, not... The 69 position. <laughs> yeah, north south. 69, uh, north south. But I didn't feel ticklish because like you were in the zone already, you know. Sometimes, um, if someone were to like touch some like sensitive spots, I'm like, I will just jump like, okay, that's it, you know. I you mean your penis. I got... Touched the there before my butthole has been touched before. Holy shit! Yeah, yeah, because uh, like, whoa, come on, man, come on, man, <laughs> dude. Okay, so are you a no gi person or do you put the gi on when you when you mm. do jujitsu? I do both because okay. um, that's what uh, Monarchy MMA Gym provides: uh, gi and no gi as well. You do both uh, yeah. equally as much because uh, we have gi classes at least three times a week and no gi classes at least once a week. Okay, let's let's be real, uh, Okay, mm. when you are rolling. There's going to be guys and girls. Yep. 
Yeah, and it gets quite uh, up close and personal mm-hmm. and sweaty. Mm-hmm. You ever get a boner? <laughs> Not a serious question. Boner. <laughs> oh. Or a banner in this case. Oh. Fuck you. Oh. Mm. We're all very sweaty. Yeah. You know, because sometimes you unintentionally get a boner. And unintentionally? You don't have a boner. Oh shit, that shit <laughs> actually you happened. You no, some- accidentally go hard. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Back to the gamma thing. Okay, mm, so mm. second fight. Um, I got choked out actually. <laughs> Semi final. Yeah. Which round was it? First round. Okay. Got you. <laughs> How long after the first fight did this second fight like the sem- semi final? Next day straight place? away. Next oh. day. Next day straight away. Okay, so then back to the first fight. How do you feel after the fight, physically wise, your body? What about damage? Oh. No damage. Just no, a sore. Just no, a sore. no sore, no nothing. Okay. okay. I'm, I was actually okay. <laughs> Okay, you okay. know, semi-finals, I was actually like, I got choked out, I lost. What I did was I tried to get a takedown, but mm-hmm. he got my back instead. So he choked me out and I fell asleep from oh, there. Damn. Okay, so yeah. it was quite quick. It was, I'm not sure, was it quick? I don't know, was it, did it last over a minute or less than a minute? I wasn't sure about that, actually. Oh, okay. So I wasn't quite sure. Quite very quick. Mm. Okay, yeah. Like, as I woke up, I was like, okay. <laughs> okay it's done. It's done. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's you know, I'm like, okay, I don't have to, I'm not, I'm not nervous anymore. I was so happy yeah. for my opponent. Load off your shoulders. Yeah. yeah. I was like, hey man, good job. Good job, man. You won. Now you please get, now, now since you beat yeah. me, please get the gold right Dude, now, you know? Damn. I mean, in, in general, right, like you would know from um just real time experience, but mm. from what I see like on TV, mm. you know, those like um, UFC fighters and shit, in general, everyone, you know, no matter how much how much they hate each other or how much shit they talk, mm-hmm. when it's all said and done, dude, all fighters are really respectful. Mm-hmm. First of all, you're tired as hell. You probably don't have that extra energy to want to be angry or emotional. Mm-hmm. You I, ever I had any opponent that was really disrespectful? Not that I know of. If there is, then... Choke them again. No, like, I don't know. <laughs> I can't trash talk to save my life, you know? Okay. <laughs> I really can't. That's just not me, you know? That's right, just right. not me. That opponent that uh, hmm? choked you out in the semi-finals, hmm. how did he do? Like, he went to the finals, right? Yeah, he went to the finals. Did he win or lose? Um, He lost by decision, actually. Okay. So he got uh silver, so I'm like, hey, but still good, you know? Yeah. <laughs> where, where is he from again? India. Okay, he's hmm. from India. But, All right. but he trained out of Tiger Muay Thai. Yeah, yeah. Well, so he had his camp in Thailand. Huh? Yeah. Dude, Tiger Muay Thai, those mm. people there have a different level of conditioning, man. Mm. And was then, that the last fight you had? Yeah, that's the last fight I had. Okay. I was actually supposed to have another fight in Singapore, yeah. I would say this year, right? Yep. And then um, it it was actually surprising for a belt. So I'm like, oh shit, that's, that's cool, you know? I was really excited for that. And then the whole pandemic situation happened and then... And Crazy dude. Yeah. Uh, wh- which organization was that? It was called uh Lion City. Okay. Yeah. So they put a belt on the line. Mm. That's always motivating, right? Yeah, that I think was it would be fun. great if a Malaysian took that belt. Don't you agree? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> MMA in Singapore is getting so big right now. Yeah. Two of the current one FC champs are Singaporean. Mm. Right? Is Christian a champ? Christian Lee, yeah, he is. And and his sister Angela Lee is a champion as well. Yeah, so two they have two champions wow. from, from mm. Singapore. Yeah. Brother and sister. Mm. Yeah, but it's fucking crazy. Yeah. Don't shoot each other, I hope. <laughs> 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 One thing I find about like the Singaporeans, right, mm-hmm. is like the guys here are generally bigger, you know. Cause the, what, all, Malaysian guys? Yeah. Cause number one, are you serious? Their yeah? quality of life is better. But number two is cause like, right, they have that mandatory like military shit. Mm. I think like 20 to 22 years old, right? Mm-hmm. They have to do national service. So a lot of them went inside, they started working out for the first time in their life and the habits stuck with them. Mm. So a lot of them are fucking fit, you know? Yeah. Like they are jacked, they are fit just because they exercise and they continue exercising. After. Dude, that's my, my first time hearing that observation. Singaporean boys are bigger physically. Not for sure, like the nerds then, they are forever nerds, right? Uh, I mean, um, if you want to, if you want to like count overall, Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what you said about the NS thing, that's real, man. Because Malaysia, we had our... Oh. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to talk shit because uh, my brother went to NS. He said he enjoyed it. Yeah, none of us did, though. <laughs> Let's you go. Yeah. I bet you probably didn't even know if you were picked or not picked for NS. Shut up. <laughs> Dude, I don't even know. Like, apparently, you had to go to some website and check whether you got picked for the our national service. Yes, it's two years. Ours is literally three months. Yeah. There's many camps, okay, all over like, Malaysia. Our skirts are, you know... I don't know many people that had to do that in Malaysia. Apparently, you can, you know, you can say like, oh, I've got asthma, you know, then I, I can't make it or I'm going to postpone it. And dude, I don't even know what happened to that. Man. Is this still a thing? No, I, I don't know. I'm not aware of it. 
Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh damn. Dude, during your time, did you go to the website and check whether you got chosen? No, I was chosen, man. And then what? how do you get out of it, Lumpy? Oh. What? I want to because I want to study. Okay, okay. Yeah. and that, that's simple. Yeah, that's simple. So yeah. did they reply you? Okay, yeah, but this, Panel. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I think like, it was quite an easy application, man. You just submit your uh, open form. <laughs> application to decline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really. Okay. Oh, that's no, but Okay, so back uh, back to Ben's point, uh, mm. he was saying like, Singaporean guys mm. are bigger than Malaysian guys. Yeah. yeah. I don't know that because I've only been to Singapore one time yeah. and I didn't see much of Singapore, mm-hmm. to be honest. I, mm-hmm. Got you. I met Ben and just went to some parties. Okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> so you were in Melbourne as well. Yeah, and oh, they're big. I dude, I love to compare this. Okay, so let's say the agents in Melbourne, mm. um, ABCs as they like to call it, Australian born Chinese. Like let's say if they're Chinese, they could be from Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore. Okay, any country, and they're probably second generation or second or third oh. at max. The agents over there mm. are definitely bigger, thicker. Mm than the agents yeah. back in Malaysia. Yeah. Even though, you know, we come from the same... Re- ancestry. Yeah, same ex- ancestry line. Mm-hmm. Just one generation difference. The He's- meat, uh, the cheap meat. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you know, um, I would say their physical education system yeah. is more developed and they probably have invested much more okay. into the like physical education. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it, it is something I noticed and I'm pretty sure that's the reason why. Yeah, but I, all I, of them play sports when they're in high school. All Singapore? Even the girls, yeah. Singapore? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I never knew that, dude. Yeah. I, I don't know a lot of things, actually. <laughs> I don't know a lot of things. Like, I'm like, oh. Really, when Ben said that, oh, um, Singaporeans are generally big, I'm like, oh, shit, really? And I then when you too, said, man. and then when you said, um, what's the this? Australians. Australians, I'm like, oh, shit. Really? Oh, it never came to your mind. It never came to my mind before. So when you guys said, like, so, right? so like, like, you know, I had that light bulb, like, ding! <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> yeah, you know? Last year, I went to Singapore um, yeah. for, to prepare my fight for Gamma. I, I trained in this place called uh, Juggernaut MMA. Okay. Yeah, so um, I saw like a couple of guys like around my size, but are definitely heavier. Even though, Even though they're, they're, they're like slightly height. heavier than me or yeah. slightly taller or, little, or maybe similar height. Mm. But I'm like, whoa, you know, like, but yeah. when I was in uh, Australia wise, right? Like the locals that who are my size are generally just bigger, you know? Yeah. The bone, uh, bone yeah, the bone structure. Like, ah, yeah. Cheating. There was one time I competed in jiu-jitsu. In they go by belts, right? Yeah. yeah are you was, a blue belt now? Right now, I'm a blue belt, yeah. yeah. So that was white belt. Yes, that was, okay. that was a white belt moment. The lightest competitor day I could have competed with was around like 10 to 15 kgs heavier than I was. Even though super disadvantaged, but it's not my choice, you know? Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, my yeah. default. Only. Did you win? No, of course not. Uh, okay. <laughs> How many opponents did you have to go with? I had to go through like three or four or five and I lost all of them. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> then, you, then you fucking learn a lot then. Yeah, I yeah. learned a lot actually. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Man. I tried fighting Brian. It's quite impossible. <laughs> <laughs> it's one move, uh, it's five moves for me. <laughs> <laughs> You know for a fact that okay, I'm not gonna use brute force. Yeah, I can't. The, it doesn't make sense. You know, you gotta out technique them. Yeah. My friend Edward, like from our high school, he, he does jujitsu as yeah. well, and he tells me the same thing. Everyone, most people are bigger than him. Yeah. Even Edward is, he's bigger than you. Yeah. Right. I think you guys are around same height, but he is thicker, a bit yeah, thicker. Like honest but, question, hmm. uh, do you think you can take Edward down? Uh, Shall I, we uh, put oh, it to the test? Maybe you guys should have a role one day. <laughs> even I'm as rusty as well, bro. Uh, jiu-jitsu wise. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, imagine how rusty is Edward. <laughs> he, how, how long Edward hasn't done it? Two, three years? <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing though. Edward thought, back in high school, Edward was like... Oh, you rolled with him before? No, I didn't. But he was oh, yeah. putting r- like all of us like in his class, like random ambas, random triangles. Like, wait, what is this? You yeah, know, yeah, that was yeah. re- really funny. Okay, Edward's below 170, 165 okay. around there. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like 20 cm... 20 cm taller than Edward. And I remember the first time he explained to me that he's taking jujitsu classes. He said to me, oh, um, you want to try? I'm going to try and take you down. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Go for it. And before I know it, I'm already on my on my butt on the floor. Yeah. Yeah, so... And he's having his way with you. Yeah, he's having his way with me, dude. He could butt fuck me if he wanted to. <laughs> That's a funny thing to say, right? But let's let's just talk about it, man. So for someone who doesn't know jujitsu, okay, let's say you're a seventy kgs, okay, and someone else comes up to you who does jujitsu. Let's say he's done it for a year, okay. Let's say he's ten kgs lighter than you. He could very much take you down, mm-hmm. wait for you to get tired from scrambling and struggling, and he's gonna pull your pants down. Oh, Ooh. and uh, rip that, that asshole apart. Nice you know what I'm saying? Thing. It sounds ridiculous, but <laughs> that's the truth, man. When you're going against someone who is well versed in grappling compared to someone who is um 
abs- absolutely um, unknown to that sport, right? Mm-hmm. You you ain't gonna do shit, man. You're pretty much um, defenseless. Resign your fate on the ground. <laughs> yeah, it's like a lion swimming in water, dude. <laughs> Put it this way: if I were, if I'm like this light, and I were to use like brute force or brute strength against someone who's like thirty or twenty kgs heavier than I am, he'll find a way to like stand back up and get back out. You know? Yeah, he will. He will. Even bench if they don't press. know anything, yeah, they, they, can, can, they, can. they can just bench press you and stuff like that. If you <laughs> Yeah, no, <laughs> serious, it happened before. Down. Let's say, for example, you could also <coughs> run into someone mm. your exact same weight mm. he, and he doesn't know much of uh, jujitsu. Mm-hmm. Probably for a period, he could actually outmuscle you because okay. he's just much stronger. Okay. Everyone's different in their own way, you know? Do you think you're strong for your size? I think I am okay. Do you think you have I'm knockout not- power? Try it, try it, Brian. Mm. Take a shot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure I'm really not yeah, sure yeah, it's hard to tell I, it's very hard to tell yeah. okay what's the worst injury you had from like doing MMA um injury wise yeah. um in a bragging competition man just I'm just asking <laughs> I'm not sure like I got knocked up before that's an injury yeah that I got cut before concussion boy <laughs> I got like, like elbow cut um elbow kicks I don't know like just like bl- oh like you, you were cut before oh, fuck. in competition or in spark, uh, training training Okay. But I would say one permanent injury or like mark I have right now is my ear. Cauliflower? Yeah, like I'm not sure if it's a cauliflower or not, but it's my left. Let me check it out. Yeah, here. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or here a little bit. I think right side more, right? Yeah, this side's, the left so, side's more. So cauliflower ear is a very common term in like for people who practice Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I don't know much about it, but yeah. I think it's mostly from the grappling or the sparring. Not just Jiu-Jitsu, like striking as well, you know? <laughs> because like, for example, right, if you get kick or punch in, in the ear too much sometimes it'll expand as well because the blood clots will just go up as well <coughs> right you know what I mean how it develops it's taking blows taking blows like sometimes uh, grappling as well you know wrestling yeah. or jujitsu same thing or sometimes their arms like blunt force like basically that. yeah, yeah basically blunt like force. That. eventually it'll just swell expand up. and swell up you know uh, this is another bro science mm. right but I, I think it gets bigger as a what do you call them? As a defense mechanism. Right? It probably grows so that you get used so that you're able to take that sort of. Mm. So your ears are getting buffer? Yes. No. <laughs> I don't know. It's like having muscles on your ear like that. Is it? Okay, people don't realize that when you do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, like grappling, you're, gonna, you're still going to take strikes every now and then. Mm-hmm. Like, you, people are going to knee you accidentally. Yeah. It happens, right? Yeah. Elbows too. Yep, sometimes, and yeah. that shit hurts man yeah especially like sometimes when you don't wear a mouthpiece as well like rather than just wearing a mouthpiece when you do striking right when you're rolling you wear a mouthpiece yep. and you wear a cup uh no when you roll you just wear a mouthpiece that's it <laughs> and okay. we have reached the end of the episode yes it's too fucking long dude <laughs> Okay, so 100 subscribers, Ben's going to get a hit tattoo. Um, He should probably or already have it now or in progress or, or whatever. Dude, thanks so much, Ben, for coming oh, on. Good, man. When I say Ben, I mean Lance. Yeah. Say Ben E because that's his Chinese name. Yeah. He was a, an amazing guest, man. Like, it, it was super chilled and I hope you enjoyed it, man. Oh, I did, man. I did. First of many, I hope. And hit the subscribe button below. Yo, tell us what you want to see. Tell us yeah. what you love. Uh, if you like me, just tell me you love me. Tell your friends about podcasts, your moms, your dads, your grandmas. Any last words, Lent? <laughs> Bye. Okay. Out. This equipment, I have to uh, do some dirty work for it. Yo, enough giving the audience too much attention. Okay, see ya. I'm missing my homies. I'm missing my oldies, my brothers, my crowdies. We all went to court, but we fool only course that we knew were the ones where we were shooting guys selling codes. To a legend, rest in peace to the old me. Rest in peace to my brothers. Rest in peace to my whole team. The oldest, I'm missing my shawty. Remember back in the day, the things you would say to